Hello YouTube and welcome to Patreon Picks! Today's episode was brought to us by Isaiah Thomas and he chose Owlboy. You know, on, on, on all of his social media, his Twitter, his Discord, every single one of his profile pictures is a glorious, beautiful, noble owl. So it makes a lot of sense that he would choose Owlboy for his game. Let's go! So you play as Otis. You're hanging out with your tutor and he talks about how you're a mute and a disappointment and he hates you and after you fail to fly to the top of this tree and you smash his favorite pot, he gives you a new lesson. Go ask everybody in the village what they think of you and your incompetence. What the heck kind of question even is that? How would somebody even answer that question? What do you think of me and my incompetence? Uh, what do you mean incompetence? Just, just my general lack of understanding and... Wait, what? Uh, well... I don't know, I... What do you think of me and my incompetence? What do you think of me and my incompetence? Yeah. I think I give you a lot of crap, but only because I'm actually your little sister, and so that's... Oh, you're recording this. <laughs> what do you think of me and my incompetence? I think you're an idiot. Or I think your incompetence is... Um, incomprehensible. <laughs> <laughs> well, after what can only be described as horrendous psychological abuse, I wake up and drink a boiled kettle of water to heal some HP, and now I can play the game. I get used to flying, talking, grabbing stuff, and after a while I get bullied, but then I get rescued by Otis's best good buddy, Getty! He's got a gun! Getty's got a gun. Getty's got a gun. Whole world's come undone. Then we see a troublemaker that some of the other villagers were talking about, and we decide to chase him down. And it led us to this room with these puzzles, and let me be perfectly frank, I don't care for puzzles. Yes, that's the nature of this type of a game, and the puzzles are very well designed, but it's just not a whole lot of fun for me. What is fun for me is the combat. Now, while the combat situations in this baby starting area aren't exactly what you'd call engaging, I, I really like them. So much, in fact, that I, I got to this optional fight, I lost in it, but then I decided, hey, I, I want to refight it because of the combat, and this is so much fun. Also, the moveset in this game is like an overpaid masseuse because it just feels so good. Eventually we catch up to the troublemaker, but he's like a spider, so he ties us up. And we, we, I'm able to escape quite easily, and then Getty and I find this device that makes the game extremely easy. By pressing X, I can warp Getty to me so I can start shooting immediately. It doesn't matter if I leave him behind, throw him off of a cliff, or even into a pool of lava. One tap of the button and he is back in my talons. Heck, if I just press the shoot button, he'll immediately warp to me and send a bullet wherever I'm pointing. It's great! And that warping's gonna be important, because while we were in the cave, our city got invaded by pirates. Which is bad news, because I was supposed to be a lookout for the pirates, not, not, not chasing troublemakers. So I sneak past the pirate searchlights and get back to my mentor, who just absolutely chews me out, because it was a horrible lookout. But almost as quickly as the pirates got here, they leave, without doing much pillaging at all. They just needed our town's MacGuffin. They got it, so they're good. However, they're headed to the capital. My mentor's gonna fly there quickly to warn them, and he assigns me to head to the old Owl Temple and turn on the wind turbines so that we can use the temple to slow down the pirates. And we're off to the next area. The temple has more puzzles, and I'll admit that the ones where you carry around rain cloud to fill up a well, they, they, they were a lot of fun. But it's here that we see the best character in the game, Fish in a Top Hat! <laughs> Actually, all the character designs in this game are just top-notch. <laughs> Screw that! All of the art in this game is top-notch! The environments are breathtaking, and honestly, I hate how almost all of the characters in this game are male, because everyone is so cute, even the pirates are great looking. I mean, is one cute owl girl too much to ask for? So in this area, there's a minor amount of combat, which I really do like. Heck, I even like taking damage, because when Otis gets hurt, he doesn't just get staggered. He goes flying, he slams into a wall, and just slowly slumps down. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Okay, so we're doing some puzzles in that temple, but then we get to this dark room. And Getty tells me, these are gnomes. They are super deadly. If they see or even hear me, they will easily kill me. So I'm not allowed to fly in this section, because they will definitely hear my wings flapping and then it'll be all over. Screw you, Getty! You're not my mom! After that, 
gotten a couple more puzzles, I am rewarded with an amazing boss fight. So two pirates manage to crash themselves in here, and while they're talking, they spot Getty and I. And now it is fighting time. The first pirate takes the skies and shoots at me with his blunderbuss while I dodge his shots and then have Getty counterattack. After enough punishments, he retreats into the ship, and then the second pirate gets onto the turret and starts shooting at me. I need to dodge his shots at just the right place to loosen this rock to go and smash the ship. It goes through both phases a couple of times, and it is just awesome. After I defeat them, the first pirate suggests that maybe the captain is breaking the pirate code and isn't coming to save them. At this point, the troublemaker from the beginning of the game comes down and rescues the second pirate, leaving Alphonse all alone. He tries to make a run for it, but it it's hopeless. The next area of the temple needs his blunderbuss and Al Boy's flight to escape. So, it looks like we're working together for a little bit. So we go through a couple of puzzles and a couple of enemy encounters and look and look at this encounter. There are so many guys and and, and Alphonse just kills them all with one shot. Look at how many guys he killed. <laughs> so after that, Getty asks to Alphonse joins us and since he felt abandoned and betrayed by the pirates, Alphonse agrees. And now we run from a giant frog. Oh, oh, flip! <laughs> Now we're in the turbine room, but there is a slight problem that is preventing us from sending this temple smashing into the pirates, and that being that this room has been out of service for years. I mean, just look at the vines. Uh, se se seriously, seriously, look at the vines. Look at everything in this game, it's so pretty! Then we head to the capital, and what do you know, once again the teacher is calling Otis just a complete and utter screw up. You had one job, Otis! Use a building that's been defunct for several decades, and you failed that too! Now everyone's going to die, Otis! Is that what you want, Otis? This is why you suck! This is why you don't have any friends, Otis! Because you suck, and I hate you, and you're dumb, and you're stupid, Otis, and I hate you, and everyone's gonna die, and you're dumb, Otis, and you suck! We have another section where we need to sneak through the pirates' lines to sabotage the lead ship. And this is where we run into some members of the Advent military. <laughs> and I really like this one guy. Mommy! Daddy! My kids! My family! Oh my god, I don't have a family! But my favorite is this lady in this cage. This is the only cute girl character in this game. And I was right, she is so adorable! And since she's got a busted leg, I get to carry her to safety. But that means that I can't carry Getty. So, no gun. But this girl has a weapon even better than a gun. I found a stick! After we use her to set her master free, we drop them both off and then we get into the ship to sabotage the furnace. Getty goes ahead and does it, but then we both get knocked out and Alphonse carries us to safety. We get to the ship deck and then Alphonse is confronted by his old crewmates. And then Maulstorm approaches. Fool, you've come to see a capital burn. Well then, take a good look! And when I spent my last red cent, she tossed me overboard. Is this how I die? Holy crap, that was so... that was like insanely easy for you, huh? The next part of the game does an amazing job at setting the mood of sadness and loss. You walk around your hometown, you see all these refugees, sad music plays, your mentor is disappointed in you, big surprise, and Getty is just not himself because of the depression that's overtaking him. At this point, Alphonse explains that the pirates are war robots. They were created by the ancient owls, and with no ancient owls telling Milestorm not to destroy everything, that's exactly what he's doing, and he needs just one more MacGuffin and the world is screwed. So, Getty, Alphonse, and myself head to the resting place of the third artifact to try and stop Milestorm from getting it. And this place is pretty cool. The whole area is just pitch dark and has a lot of fun puzzles based around the darkness. And also this, which is just an insane test of reflexes. I had a pretty rough go at it, you know, I've been playing video games for a majority of my life. I just want to know, did anybody else have an insanely tough time with this puzzle? I mean, I eventually did defeat it and several of the other puzzles, including one that deserves a musical interlude. Oh crap, I, I shouldn't be here. Fly! Fly, Otis! Fly! And this leads to a climatic meetup with Alphonse's old buddy, Dirk, who traps all three of us and the troublemaker in a room with the murder robot. And it is a tough fight, but as mentioned, combat in this game is insanely fun. With enough skillful dodging and shooting, we take the W. 
Now the next part is my favorite because the puzzles are interspersed with a lot of fighting and I need to navigate each room while blasting tons of foes. The lava looks gorgeous and I just love shooting these monkeys and watching them splash into the molten liquid. Oh, so satisfying. However, the monkeys do have this attack where they grab you and then drag you into the magma. Also, there's a crazy fun boss fight and it's video game donkey himself. For I truly am the king of all monkeys. But now we can grab the artifact. All we need to do is lower the screw and- uh, Oh, oh, it is getting hot in here! What, what, what is it, the freaking Aladdin game on the Sega? And this may not be the best time to reiterate this, but the graphics in this game really are exquisite! We made it! We're alive! Oh no! Now, this boss, man, man, every boss in this game is just so much fun. They go through a few phases, each one harder than the last, until eventually you win. But when you beat this one, you jump on his head and ride him like a skateboard, and it is time for another adrenaline pumping level. Oh, this, this really is Aladdin. Well, watch this. So Twig saved me from becoming Alpaste. T Twig is the troublemaker and Getty is pretty mad at him because he was allied with the pirates during Advent's destruction. Alphonse and I are willing to forgive Twig because he was just betrayed by Dirk as well, but Getty is having none of it and he leaves our party. But I will take Twig every day of the week over Getty. Because sure, while he may be the most consistent way of dealing damage, Twig has a hook shot! In the next part of the game, we meet Twig's family, and we sneak aboard a pirate ship, because we fear that the pirates may have all three of the MacGuffins. However, you know how I said the last part was the best, because it had puzzle solving mixed with combat? Well, now we get puzzle solving mixed with stealth, and I hate this. I mean, we had stealth back in Advent, and if you got spotted there, you only need to dodge like three bombs from the top of the screen. No big deal. But if you get spotted here, they press a button that causes poison to fill the entire area, and you need to go up into the air ducts to find the switch to turn it off. So I ended up spending a lot of time in the air ducts, kind of like I was Bruce Willis or something. Bruce? Willis, yeah. I spent a lot of time in air ducts. I, I definitely don't live up here. I have a home. Just scooch on by. Oh. Now I'm just glossing past the pirate ship, even though it was like the longest part of the game. But I, I hated this part of the game. It was super long, it was super annoying, and even the boss was kind of lame. It was Alphonse's old buddy, Dirk. The first two phases are pretty fun to fight. You block some daggers, you wait for him to charge, then you dodge his attack, and then you have Alphonse shoot him in the face. The third phase is just plainly absurd. There is no rhyme or reason to his attacks. The only way I was able to make it past this part was to simply not take any damage during the first two phases so I could just survive the beatdown he lays on you for 20 seconds and then shoot him in the face. And then he has a really touching death scene. And now he try and steal the MacGuffins. But if we're gonna do that, we need to destroy Captain Malstorm first. But before our battle even begins, some other character jacks the amulets, and then Getty crashes a helicopter into Malstorm's head, and we get the frick out of there! Now we need to go and stop the owl who stole the medals or whatever, and for this we blast off to the upper atmosphere. And this is where the game is the weakest, in my opinion. You see, up here the air is too thin to fly, which means you can't use your ally's ability. It's just basic platforming. Tell me, how do you build up three unique, fun gameplay styles, and then just end it off with saying, Eh, just play a basic level of Super Mario Bros, kid. From a narrative and challenge perspective, I hate this. But it's a fun level. It's pretty fun to not have to think and just play through a simple platforming section. And then we get to the guy with all the treasures, who was like some weakling coward from Owl Village, and we told him he needs to stop whatever he's doing, he's destroying the world! And then he decided to try and kill us, and this was a very cool, very climactic fight. You need to fly around the room, dodge all of his attacks, use all three of your followers to damage him, and then when you finally defeat him, we ask him, Why? Why are you trying to end the world? And he was all, I'm trying to save the world! And we're all, oh, why, why didn't you just say so? And then Mousewarm bursts in the room! It's time to die! And then I get one-shotted, but then the owl guy revives me with the power of the relics. Otis, you need to complete the anti-hex! We'll hold him off! No, 
I need to save my friends. Okay, I do not need to save my friends. I, I, I mean, I need to complete the totem. So I go, I spin, and I put it back together, and wow, the anti-hex is created. You think this is enough to stop me? Ha! I'll crush this little hex of yours! Are you sure about that? And that's the end of the game. There's still like this really artistic dream sequence where Otis talks and the plot of the game is kind of explained by your mentor. I've always believed in you, Otis. Bull crap! You've been an emotionally abusive monster, dude! This is destroyed! I'm just gonna fall to my death! Later! So, that's Owlboy. What an absolute artistic marvel. Tru truly fantastic. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of dungeon crawlers, but the amazing moveset and the fun combat... Owlboy is an excellent game. Thanks, Isaiah. Now for the picky part of Patreon picks. All right, now for the fun part of Patreon picks. I got all the picks since the last time I picked. I got Isaiah's new picks. I got all the previous picks. Now go ahead and... <clears throat> One thing that I really want to buy, and I want once once I, I, I save up enough money from the Patreon, uh, I, pl I plan on buying a big old bingo drum, because this, this, this just doesn't work. But let's see. Next game on Patreon picks shall be... I, I grabbed like a huge chunk. Shall be... Wolfster25. Yes, the Oath in Felgana. About flipping time. This guy, this guy has been the most generous. He's, he's, he's he, and I, I swear, at least a fifth, maybe even a fourth of them have been Yes, Oath of Felgana. Since he's been donating, at the very minimum, a sixth of them. He, he deserves to finally have it. Thanks a lot, Wolfster, and hopefully you like the video. See you later, everyone. If you want to get into the bucket, or for hopefully bingo drum eventually, head over to the Patreon. It'll be, it'll be in the link, and then I'll, I'll add you in with Wolfster and all of Isaiah and Megan and, and Shono and David and all the great, fantastic people. Uncanny stage rage. Leo Dustin. Ayla, you know, the usual suspects.